Sometimes in statistics, we want to predict one variable from another. For instance, we might want to predict weight from height, or we might want to predict happiness from income. Regression is the analysis of the relationship between variables. There are response variables, also called dependent variables, the outcomes, or the Y variable. And there are explanatory variables, also called predictors, or X variables. We want to understand the relationship between X and Y. Sometimes the relationship is curvy. Here we have a logarithmic relationship. And sometimes the relationship is well described by a straight line. Drawing a straight line is the most common form of regression called linear regression. In linear regression, we predict the y as a linear function a plus bx. We often call the predicted y y hat. The hat means it's a prediction or an estimate. The estimate of y is a plus bx, is this red line. But how do we know what line to draw? We could draw many lines through the data. We could draw this red line, or we could draw this blue line. Why is the red line better than the blue line? Well, let's measure the vertical distance between the lines and the points. The vertical distance is called the residual. Why do we measure the vertical distance? The vertical residual measures how far off the prediction is from the true value. We want our predictions to be as close as possible. Here, we have our predicted value on the line and the true value, the dot, our data. And the residual is the true value minus the predicted. Or in mathematical notation, we would call this the y minus the y hat. And again, why is the red line better? Well, the red line's residuals are smaller. So if we just look at the residuals, we could stack up the residuals and compare them to measure how well the line fits. And if we stack up the residuals, we see the red residuals are smaller. We added up the length of the residuals. This is the sum of the absolute value of the residuals, or just the size of the residuals. In mathematical notation, we could write that this is the sum of the absolute value of the residuals, which is y minus y hat and we add it up for all n data points. And we saw that the red line's sum of the absolute value of the residuals is smaller than the blue line. And this is a completely valid way to fit a line to data, finding a line that has a small sum of absolute residuals. However, this is not what we usually do. Linear regression minimizes the sum of the squared residuals. So let's look at this again. Let's look at our residuals, and we're going to square them. Now, squaring them will have an especially big effect on the large residuals. The large residuals, when we square them, will get much, much bigger. So now these large residuals are extra huge. And we can, again, add them all up together by stacking them up. So let's stack up the residuals. And the blue residuals were very large. It didn't even fit on the screen and the red residuals are smaller. These are the sum of the squared residuals. For each data point from one through n, we add up the squared residual. And this red line gave us a better sum of squared residuals. The red line is better because its sum of the squared residuals is smaller. Now, there aren't just two possible lines we could draw. We could draw this line, or this line, or this line. For any line, I can calculate the sum of the squared residuals. For any line, I can calculate the sum of the yi minus y hats squared. And we choose the line with the smallest sum of the squared residuals. We choose the line with the least sum of the squared residuals. That's why it's called least squares regression. And out of all of these lines, the red line had the smallest sum of squared residuals. Why squared, though? Why do we square the residuals? Well, part of it is a computational reason. Squaring is a differentiable function, so it's easy to minimize. When we find the regression line, we search through all possible lines. 
And there are infinitely many lines we could draw through the data. And we want to find the line that minimizes the sum of the squared residuals. And remember, what did we say our y hat was? It's just a linear equation. So we have a linear equation. And what we're doing is we're finding the values a and b, the intercept and the slope, that minimize this equation. And because we have a squared here, this is differentiable, and it's very easy to solve. However, if the squared was an absolute value, it would have sharp corners. It would not be differentiable, and it would not be easy to minimize this function. This means that we have easy formulas to compute the least squares regression line because we can solve this equation. So we get that the slope can just be described as a function of the x's and the y's. And similarly, the intercept can also be solved for. Now, in addition to computational ease, there is another even more important reason why we used least squares regression. It is the maximum likelihood solution when we assume the residuals are normally distributed. What does that mean? Well, the red line goes through the middle of the data, right? So most residuals should be close to zero. Some will be a little above zero, and some will be a little below zero. In other words, most points are close to the regression line. So the residuals are centered around zero if our line goes through the middle of the data. And because of the central limit theorem, it's common that the residuals are also close to normally distributed. So they're centered at zero and they're normally distributed. Now this is the likelihood function, which is similar to the probability density function when we assume the data is generated from a line with normally distributed residuals. This is the probability density function of a normal distribution. This tells us how likely our data would be with different lines. So depending on what values of A and B we put in here, it tells us how likely those values would be given the data XI that we have, XI and YI. And we want to find the line that is most likely. So we want to maximize the likelihood function. We want to choose the values of A and B that make our data most likely. So how do we maximize this function? Well, I see a square in this function. Now let's simplify a little bit by moving the product into a sum in the exponent. So when I multiply all these things, this exponent is now going to have a sum in it. So now I see a sum of squares. So to maximize the likelihood, we are really just minimizing this exponent. We are minimizing the sum of the squared residuals. The least squares solution is the maximum likelihood solution with normal residuals. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to learn more statistics.